Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my craft room and welcome if you're brand new and joining for the first time. Be sure to subscribe. This is going to be a really fun video that's going to kick off a series of videos for this summer. In this new series that I decided to do this summer, I thought it would be really fun and encouraging for us to get to know our Cricut machine. So if you have a brand new Cricut that you have not opened, or if you have a brand new Cricut that you have opened but it's collecting dust because you're a little intimidated, then we are going to open that up, we're gonna brush off the dust, and we're gonna do a series of projects to get to know your Cricut this summer. What I wanna do is start really easy on the first week, and I wanna to transition to a little bit more complex projects as the weeks go on. So this summer we're gonna to get to know your Cricut machine. And if you have been with me for a while, if you've been crafting with me for years, then this is just a fun opportunity for you to go back to the basics and just have some fun with crafting. I love every once in a while just going back to all of the things that had me fall in love with my Cricut in the first place. And today's project is one of them. In fact, today's project is why I bought my first Cricut in the first place. So what we're going to do is in week one, which is this video, we are going to focus on adhesive vinyl and we are going to work on adhesive vinyl on drinkware. It's one of the most popular Cricut projects to do, but also it is the most beginner friendly project that you can start with. If you are new to Cricut and you have not done anything, this is going to be the perfect start. I'm also going to be using a fun hashtag called hashtag Bethadilly Inspired. That's going to allow you to share your projects both with me and and our community of crafters over on Instagram. So as you are working on your projects in the weeks ahead, please be sure to share them if you would like on Instagram and use that hashtag. That way it will connect you to a variety of other crafters as well. And you guys can encourage each other as you are crafting. Okay, let's go ahead and start with week one. Today we're going to be making a really cute coffee mug and I'm going to walk you through each step and take you by the hand. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you are excited for a fun summer challenge. This is going to be fun and refreshing and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed creating it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so before we begin the project for today and our first challenge, I wanted to talk about the machine that I'm going to be using for this entire series. So I have a Cricut Joy, I have a Cricut Explore 3, which is this machine right here, and then I have the Cricut Maker, and I have all of the machines. So I thought I'm gonna use the Explore 3 for this whole summer challenge because it's more of the middle of the road Cricut, and if I'm being really honest, I recommend getting the Explore 3 over any of the machines. Now, that is just because of the way that I like to craft. I am just a basic crafter. I wanna make mugs, t-shirts, decals from time to time. I like just to do some basic crafting. I have found that I don't use my maker just because I don't really enjoy cutting wood or fabric. Those things just don't really matter to me. So this is my favorite machine and because it is the middle of the road Cricut, I thought it only best to use that for this entire project. Project. So the first thing we're going to do today is we are going to add a decal to a coffee cup. Now the challenge for week one is to use adhesive vinyl on drinkware. I did this for the first week because it is the most beginner friendly Cricut project that you can do. And so I want us just to start easy. The first week is going to be super easy and we're going to apply a simple little design to a coffee mug. Now, if you wanted to do either a wine glass or a tumbler, then I will place links to other videos that I've created that are more specific for each type of drinkware that you want to do. So if you wanted to do a Starbucks cup, if you wanted to do a wine glass, then I have all of those tutorials listed down in the description box for you and you can just just go ahead and take a peek at those, but this is so super easy. The first thing I'm going to do is, this is the mug I'm going to use. I found it at Target. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to get an idea for the size of my decal. Now, when doing drinkware, one thing you want to be aware of is you want to give a little room for the recipient to sip out of the mug. Now, vinyl is not food safe, so you just don't wanna have your lip come in contact with it. So I like to generally give about an inch of room at the top. So I'm getting my little measuring tape out here. I'm gonna get an idea for how big, I'm thinking two and a half inches in height is where I want to stay around for this project, because that gives me enough room up here to sip 
but it also is a nice substantial big design for this mug. So I'm gonna stay around two and a half inches for the height and then that should be just fine. So I went ahead and found a really fun design that I wanna use for this. I will link the design that I'm using down in the description box below, but let's go ahead and we're going to go step by step. I'm gonna take you into Cricut Design Space and show you how to get this all sized and cut out. Okay, here I am in Cricut Design Space, and I'm just in my canvas, so I have a brand new project here. And I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side, and I am going to click on Upload, because I am going to use an SVG that I have purchased elsewhere. I personally do not have Cricut access and do not pay the monthly membership, because I find that I like to purchase different designs and different fonts on my own, and I just like to pay for what I'm going to use. So I'm gonna go to Upload, and then I am going to select this file right here because this is the one that I have purchased for this project. So it's already uploaded into Design Space, so I'm just going to click on it, and then I'm gonna go right down to the right side down here and say Add to Canvas. All right, now it's going to add my design right to my canvas and it might come in a little bit big. <laughs> yes, it did. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to resize my design really quickly. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either go up into a corner and you see how you have a double arrow here up in the right hand side. You can either size it this way just by dragging or if you'd like, you can come up to size right here. And again, I wanted my height to stay around two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna double click on the height area and then I will just put 2.5 with my keyboard and then there is my design. So that places my width at about three and a quarter. I'm going to off camera really quickly just look with a measuring tape at my mug and just make sure that that is going to look appropriate. Okay, and I checked, that looks great. So what I'm gonna do next is come over to my layers panel right over here, and I'm just gonna click the top layer. I am going to come down and I'm just going to say attach. That way everything just stays right where I see it on the screen, and it cuts out in exactly these areas. So that looks good to me. Now, another thing you need to decide on is if you want to have the design on both sides of your mug, or if you just wanna have it on one side side of your mug. So if you do want to have it on both sides, all you'll do is come over to the right side in the layers panel and there is a button called duplicate. You'll just click that and it's going to duplicate your image at the exact same size so that you have two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to need one. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and delete it. And now I'm ready to create. I'm going to use the Cricut Explore 3. So you'll just wanna make sure that you select the correct machine that you're using right here. And then once you have the correct machine selected, you can go ahead and click Make It. And then you are going to go to this next screen that shows your Cricut mat. And this is going to show you where it's going to place your design on the mat. So you can move this around if you need to, if you for some reason had a scrap piece of vinyl that you wanted to put in a different part of your mat, you can move that around, but I'm good with the top left, that works for me. And now what I'm going to do is simply come down to the bottom right and say continue. Now I'm gonna make sure that my machine is turned on so that it can connect to Design Space. And once it's connected, what I'm going to do is select the material that I am going to be using. I am going to select this vinyl setting right here. It says vinyl, smart vinyl, permanent. I have it flagged because it's one of my most used materials that I use. And I am going to be using a different vinyl than the Cricut vinyl. I'll be using a vinyl that I really like called Oracle 651. But I have found, at least with my machines, that this smart vinyl permanent setting works perfectly. So I'll go ahead and select that. And then it's just going to remind you of what tools you're going to need. You won't need anything in clamp A. In clamp B, you'll want to make sure you have your fine point blade loaded, and then you're ready to start loading your material. Okay, let's go ahead and get our mat all loaded with our vinyl and move on to the next step. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use my green mat. Pardon the messiness. This is true crafting right here. 
but you can use either your light grip blue mat or your standard grip, which is the green mat. Quite honestly, I just pick whichever is still really sticky. Now I have a larger than I need piece of vinyl here, but what I like to do is just place all of the material onto the mat and then I trim away all of my extra later. I do this because I find that I waste less vinyl when I do it this way, but if you wanted to cut out your exact size and just put that on the mat, you can do that as well. Okay, I'm placing it onto the mat. Okay, and I did it vinyl side up. So you'll see on the back, you have the backing of the vinyl. It's kind of like a papery backing, but you'll see the vinyl on top and that's how you'll want to load that on your mat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my machine and get this all loaded. And I'm gonna slide it right there. I'm gonna click this flashing button right here to load my mat into my machine. Okay, and it was just making sure that I have enough material to complete the cut. And now when this button, it's kind of off camera, it's a little plus sign. When that starts flashing, I can select that and it will begin cutting. Okay, it is all done. And then this little double arrow will flash indicating that it's time to unload the mat. So I'll click that and it will just eject the mat from the machine. Okay, so we have our cut all done. It's a little hard to see right there, but it is all cut out right here. I can go ahead and close up my machine. And if you want a tutorial on how I decorated my machine, because I know I'll get asked, I'll link that in the description box below, or you can find it in this top right corner. That's a really fun project. Okay, to remove your vinyl from your cutting mat, you're simply going to turn your cutting mat over. And what you wanna do is you wanna bend your mat and not your material. So I'm gonna start bending my mat away and keeping my material as flat as I can. This will help so that your vinyl doesn't bubble up and it will keep it intact really, really well. Okay, so now I can remove my mat. We're done with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm very carefully going to look where my design is and I'm going to cut that out as close to the design as possible because I said that is how I like to save vinyl the most. Okay, so there is the piece that I'm going to keep. Here's all my extra that I can just put back in my vinyl drawer for another time. Okay, let's set this off to the side for a moment because I want to prep my cup really quickly. That way it's ready to have the vinyl applied in just a moment. So I have this little cup cradle that I love. I went many years without having something like this and there are other ways to study your cup or your object when putting vinyl on, but this object is amazing. I would recommend it over and over again. It's wonderful for drinkware, but it's also wonderful for ornaments and other round objects that you want to apply your vinyl to as well. So it has these little grippy stoppers. They're so nice. You just lay your cup here and then it doesn't move. You don't need a third hand or anything. You can just focus on applying your vinyl. It's wonderful. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to decide where I want my decal to go. So you're going to decide which side of the mug you wanna put it on. I'm right-handed and I'm going to make this for myself. And I personally want to see my design as I am sipping from my little coffee mug. So I'm going to put it on this side. Now, if you did cut out two, then of course you would put one on the front and one on the back. But why we need to know that right now is because we want to bring in some rubbing alcohol. I just have some in a spray bottle here. And you want to prep your drinkware really quickly with some rubbing alcohol. What this is going to do is it's going to remove any of the oils that are on the surface, any dust that may be on the surface. And this will help your vinyl lay down really well. And it will also help your vinyl last a little bit longer because when you have a good application, then your vinyl is a little bit more successful. Okay, so I have focused on the area that I'm placing the vinyl down. Now I can just set this off to the side. That way I can work on this. Okay, I'm gonna grab a weeding tool. If you have never used a weeding tool, it kind of looks like something that you would see at the dentist, <laughs> but it's got this little hook on it. It's really, really handy. There are a variety of different weeding tools. I have one that kind of 
um, it's shaped a little bit differently. And then I have another one that is a pokey tool and it kind of goes straight up. So you will find as you are doing your own crafting what you prefer, but I you like just kind of the basic one. I use this a lot and it's, it's worked for me. Mine's a little bent at the tip, but that's okay. I'm going to replace it someday. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit of my vinyl at the corner and this process is called weeding and what you're doing here is you're just removing any part of the design that you do not want on your final project so in this case we are going to remove the background so that the letters remain okay and then you can just throw this away and then we're also going to remove the middle of our letters. So I'm just going to gently take all of those little pieces out. Now, as I mentioned, this is my favorite adhesive vinyl to use for a couple reasons. First of all, it weeds beautifully. It's so, so easy. Second of all, I like that on their white vinyl, they put it on a blue background because that makes it so much easier to see when weeding and it just makes such a difference. So those are a couple reasons why I very quickly, once I started using my Cricut, started using this vinyl and I've never looked back. I have loved it and I've loved it for many years. Okay, I have all my little pieces right on my finger here, so I'm just going to place those in the garbage as well. And now we have our little weeded design. So you just want to double check and make sure that everything that remains on this sheet is what you want on your final project. If not, you'll just continue weeding, but I got all the pieces, so we're good. And now we're going to get some transfer tape so that we can transfer our vinyl design from this cutting sheet to our project, which in this case is our coffee mug. Okay, now we're going to bring in our transfer tape and this transfer tape is phenomenal. I found this on Amazon on a whim a couple years back and it was during Black Friday, it was a good deal and I thought, why not? I'll just try it. Now, I've had my channel for about three years now and I have been very, very repetitive about the fact that I will only share products that I absolutely love. So if you see it on my channel, I absolutely love it. Trust me, there are some things that I have purchased that I have not loved very much and you will never see that on my channel. So I will only share things that I love and this is one of them. This transfer tape is wonderful for many reasons. It has a paper backer so that you can reuse it. It's wonderful, it comes on a nice big roll. And I also like the grid lines. I think that's really helpful for when you are placing your item on your project. So what I'm going to do, you can either use a weeding tool or your fingers. I'm just going to grab a little corner of my transfer tape and then I am going to peel this up. I'm going to save this for later because I want to go ahead and save my piece of transfer tape. You can reuse this over and over again. So it's nice to keep that little paper handy. And now I'm just going to lay that transfer tape right on my project. Okay, I have a little piece here little weeded piece that came off. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're all good now. Now I'm going to use a little scraper and I'm going to scrape and burnish. And this is going to press the transfer tape and the vinyl together. That way it meets really, really well and I can peel it up off of that blue cutting sheet. So I like to burnish the front and then I'm gonna use my little tool here to peel it up. I like to turn it over and burnish the back. This for me really helps when it's time to peel up the vinyl off of our cutting sheet. And again, that cutting sheet is that blue background that you see. Okay, so now having it still face down, I'm going to grab this little backer and peel it away. And then you'll see that my vinyl stays down on my transfer tape. Isn't that nice? Okay, easy peasy. Okay, now we get to center this on our mug. Okay, I am going to, again, be mindful that I want to leave a generous amount of room for my little lip to sip my coffee. I think, I think right about there is good. So I'm going to lay that down 
just like that. Now, if you have a coffee mug that is a little bit more curved, mine is pretty straight walled. As you can see, it, it's 90 degrees, right? But if you have a coffee mug that is a little bit more curved, I will place a link to a video on how you can be successful with your vinyl when you are placing it on a curved surface because many, many coffee mugs are curved. Can you tell these little vinyl pieces, they stick around forever. <laughs> they are just everywhere. Okay, what I like to do now is I take my thumb and I start in the middle and then I just go out towards the edges just like that. Super easy. And then I'll come back through with my scraper and I'll just reinforce that pressure. Easy peasy. Now, I want you to be able to share your projects that you're doing throughout these next weeks as we do this fun summer challenge. So I am doing a fun hashtag and the hashtag is Bethadilly Inspired. So as you are creating your projects and getting to know your Cricut in the weeks ahead, go ahead and use that hashtag on Instagram. That's an easy place for us to all share our projects. That way you can share what you're doing and get encouragement from some other crafters. Now very gently, I'm just grabbing my weeding tool to peel up a little piece of this transfer tape and I'm going to peel away, leaving my vinyl right on my mug. Now, you're gonna to wanna to go slow and nudge down any little pieces that may want to peel up with your transfer tape, but mine did really, really well. So I don't need to do any type of touch up. Isn't that cute? I really love the ombre look of this mug. I'll try my best to find it and link it down below. It's so cute. Okay, what I wanna do really quickly though is I want to take my little backer here and I'm going to put my transfer tape right back on it. That way I can reuse it and it keeps crafting costs down. And that is our final project for week one. Again, the challenge was applying adhesive vinyl to drinkware. And I really wanted to do that for week one because I find that when I first got my Cricut, this was the most beginner friendly project to start with. So be sure to use that hashtag and let me know what you started in week one. Now, if you are giving this to someone, you want to be mindful of care instructions. So after I apply adhesive vinyl to drinkware, I like to let this set for about one or two days. That way the vinyl just really sets nice on the mug before washing it. Another thing you want to do is you want to hand wash your mug only and you want to avoid the microwave. Both of those things will encourage your vinyl to last much longer. So you want to avoid both of those. And you'll also want to avoid just letting it sit in water. So if your dishes are stacking up in your sink, make sure that your nice new mug or drinkware is not soaking in water for too long or at all because you don't want your vinyl to be disrupted and peel off. All right, there is our first little project. I hope you enjoyed this. Next week during week two, we are going to explore iron-on and making t-shirts, which is one of my favorite things to do. And I can't wait to see what you guys do as well. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you're working on. Even if you have been crafting with me for a long time and you have been doing vinyl for a long time, this is a great opportunity for you just to go back to the basics and do some fun crafting with your Cricut. Maybe you haven't done this in a while and it's just always refreshing to do some different types of crafts. All right, everyone, I'll see you next week.